Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of Psalm 65, 11, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. The whole verse says, You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. Let's read the context. Five. Starting verse 5 here. By awesome deeds in righteousness you will answer us. By awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us. And do we not hear those answers, especially to our prayers? O oh God of our salvation, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far off seas, who establish the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power, you who still the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. They also who dwell in the farthest parts are afraid of your signs. You make the outgoings of the morning and evening rejoice. That would be sunrise and sunset. You make the outgoings of the morning and evening rejoice. Sunrise, sunset. And they are something to behold and rejoice over. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows and make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. So something interesting you can do, and you can do, that with, do this with most of the Psalms, if not all of them, but this one here, if you go and look at these references in here, um, and your paths drip with abundance, what, what those paths are, uh, the little hills, when you look up references like that and just work your way through real slow, elsewhere in the Bible, you start to see a very interesting picture. A different message is being given here, hidden within the text. You start to realize what these things are. Pastures clothed with little, clothed with flocks. What is the reference for flocks in the Bible? What is the reference for pastures in the Bible? And you start to see a completely different message is hidden within this message. Only those that the Lord has opened their eyes to, only those that believe will, will be able to find it. And it is truly a blessing to find those hidden messages. I'll leave you all to find that one on your own. It's actually pretty interesting. All the year round, every hour of every day, God is richly blessing us, both when we sleep and when we wake, his mercy waits upon us. The sun may leave us a legacy of darkness, but our God never ceases to shine upon his children with beams of love. Like a river, his loving kindness is always flowing, with a fullness inexhaustible as his own nature. Like the atmosphere which constantly surrounds the earth and is always ready to support the life of man, the benevolence of God surrounds all his creatures. In it, as in their element, they live and move and have their being. Yet as the sun on summer days gladdens us with beams more warm and bright than at other times, and as rivers are at certain seasons swollen by the rain, and as the atmosphere itself is sometimes fraught with more fresh, more bracing, and more balmy influences than heretofore, so is it with the mercy of God. Some summers it's hotter than others. Sometimes God's mercy is greater than at other times. Look at the parallels here. It hath its golden hours, its days of overflow, when the Lord magnifieth the grace before the sons of men. Amongst the blessings of the nether springs, the joyous days of harvest are a special season of excessive favor. It is the glory of autumn that the ripe gifts of providence are then abundantly bestowed. That's usually harvest season. It is the mellow season of realization, whereas all before was but hope and expectation. Great is the joy of harvest. Happy are the reapers who fill their arms with the liberality of heaven. The psalmist tells us that the harvest is the crowning of the year. Surely these crowning mercies call for crowning thanksgiving. Indeed they do. Let us render it by the inward emotions of gratitude. Let our hearts be warmed. Let our spirits remember, meditate, and think upon the goodness of the Lord. Then let us praise him with our lips, 
and laud and magnify his name, from whose bounty all this goodness flows. Let us glorify God by yielding our gifts to his cause. A practical proof of our gratitude is a special thank offering to the Lord of the harvest. Some of the greatest fruit you can produce is the fruit of your lips. How do you glorify God? How do you give thanks to God? Some of the most memorable and amazing moments are when we stop and we think and are, and are awestruck at the amazing providence of God and even sometimes the simplest things and it causes sometimes the greatest expression of gratitude. Just recently, I hauled a bunch of hay. We were running two vehicles and two trailers, trying to get as much as we could. After a couple of loads, we realized that one of the trailers, the bigger one, the tires were coming apart, all four. Well, technically all five because the spare was coming apart too. At the same time, all of them. If you've ever had to try to change a tire, of course we had no spare. If you ever try to change a tire on a flat trailer, with a load on there, which this one was carrying three 1,500 plus pound hay bales. It's near impossible. One of the amazing things was to watch all this unfold and to know that it was God holding it all together, to know that he was the one providing the amazing blessing on us that day. And when you see things like that and you start to pay closer attention, you start to realize he does this every single day for us, sometimes without us even realizing it. Again, like I said the other day, be thankful you have air conditioning. In this heat, how could anyone make it without it? Be thankful you have food, especially if you have food that you can share with others. Be thankful that you have everything that you have. Others may look upon it and say that you're not doing that well. I look upon that and say, if the Lord's given it to you, you, you do well indeed. And what's even more amazing is that no matter what, what's waiting on the other side is the true blessing. This blessing just gets us through this life, but the true blessing waits on the other side with the Lord. When the harvest comes in, when the time comes, when we are taken up, that's when the true blessing appears. Not a lot of people will read this devotion and go, oh, it says it's going to happen in the fall. Well, technically, there's two harvests. There's a harvest in the spring and a harvest in the fall. See, in Israel, when they go through the summer, they take a harvest, the beginning of fall. And then a little bit later, another field is planted and it goes back around to the spring. And that harvest is in the spring. Those harvests of the barley and the wheat at that time were the first fruit offerings. Jesus is the first fruits. So what comes next is the harvest, the full harvest. And after that, the gleanings. And when you look at how the salvation of the Lord is laid out in the book of Revelation, before, during, and after the tribulation, you see the first fruits 2,000 years ago, the main body. 2,000 years later, and the gleanings come after. Remember, there's two harvests, the barley and the wheat. If you look at the significance, and I did this in a video back in 2019, if you look at the significance of the barley and the wheat harvest and what they represent, you start to see a very interesting picture come about. A picture so strikingly, what's the word I'm looking for? Specific. So strikingly specific. You can't help but see things in a much clearer manner relating to these topics and others of what the Lord is doing and the mystery he hid in plain sight for us to find. Like Proverbs says, it's the glory of God to hide a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. And we should be searching it out because the great blessing is knowing the truth. Of all blessings, the greatest is knowing the truth. Knowing the truth when most others don't. Knowing what's going to happen when most others don't. We can tell people, I can tell you the future. You can't say tell the future. Yes, I can. I have a book that tells me the future. I know what's going to happen. And I can go back in history and prove every time before that that's happened. And I can show you where the precursor movements are happening. The, pre, the pre-events are already happening for these new ones that are coming up. And we're all going to see it. Luckily for some of us, 
we're only going to see it to a point and then we're gone. But the rest of the world will see it in full color. This is also the providence of God. A lot of people look at this as being something negative. It's also the providence of him fulfilling his word no matter what. Concerning prophecy, concerning judgment, concerning wrath, concerning blessing, concerning salvation, concerning hope, concerning deliverance, concerning redemption. The Lord will fulfill his word in all aspects. We have the blessing of knowing this word and knowing this truth, and it is from him. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. Whether we realize it or not, whether we see it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, God pours out his blessing and his goodness on all of us. It rains on the just and the unjust. So let us give thanks every day for the wonderful, simple things the Lord gives us. For the wonderful, complicated things the Lord given us, gives us. And for the things that he gives us that have such a profound effect on us and our faith. The truth. The truth that we have that is undeniable. The truth that we have that cannot be debated. The truth of his word, which carries us through all parts of this life and destroys all arguments that are contrary. There's not a doctrine out there that can't be proven or disproven by the Bible. There's not a false doctrine that cannot be obliterated by the Bible. There's not a scripture that can be quoted to prove a false doctrine that can't be obliterated completely and disproven by the associated verses with that same one. We merely have to read the book. So since you have such a great blessing at your fingertips, read it. Read it and be amazed. Gain hope, gain strength, gain prosperity. Prosperity in your spirit. Because the truth is exactly what he says it is. And when we put our trust in him for that truth, when we rely on him for that truth, when we look to that truth, this word, the Bible, our fears disappear. Because we know that we are his and he is ours. We know this word holds nothing but blessings for us. And that cannot be debated. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.